to DC today on Wednesday, February the 28th. It is good to be with you as it always is. And uh, futures were negative coming into the open and we opened down, we were down as much as 200 points and then sort of slowly regained for a lot of the day at least. Rates on the day, at least on the treasury rates were really kind of unchanged. We dropped about two basis points on tens. Um, there's angst over a number out tomorrow on PCE, which is really the Fed's preferred measure uh, on inflation. And it's expected, you know, CPI ticked up this amount. And so it's expected to follow suit. CPI was up 0.4% on core. So 3.9% year over year. PCE, which has been more friendly to the Fed, frankly, it's their preferred barometer of, of inflation. And also it has been tracking closer to their target um, versus the fixed basket of goods and services that CPI tracks. Um, so we get that number out tomorrow. And, and frankly, I think markets were really just trading a bit sideways up and down. And so there was some noise today, but we'll see what we get uh, tomorrow. Today, we had a fresh read on Q4 GDP, which uh, ticked a little lower by 0.1 percentage point, came in at 3.2. We were at 3.3. Again, it's very strong and it's, you know, if anything, I think it's reaffirming um, or affirming, sorry, uh, for markets to see you know, revisions come in basically the same and in line. So those things, those things are, are both good. I had a little note in there, you know, we, we obviously are bottom up guys and gals. So we look at things differently than trying to judge, you know, which sector will outperform the best based on how the world will turn. But nonetheless, this is a pretty interesting period of time with a real, uh, a rising real Fed funds rate. And so it's worth just looking back in history and to, to see different periods of time, different sample sets, during those types of environments, which sectors tended to outperform. And it was the defensive historically, uh, pretty much across the board. There, there was variation around part of that defensive answer with energy, because of course, oil prices are very volatile, but it was staples, it was utilities, it was energy. And my comment in there is we own some of this stuff based on the fundamentals. But if there was a contrarian lens to look at what has performed and hasn't year to date, and perhaps what what may perform as some of the breadth in the overall market moves, maybe from some technology names, particularly around AI into to some of the other sectors and some of the other components of the markets at more reasonable valuations. David had a note in there, you know, the big news for the day company wise was, you know, Apple sort of ditched its plans to, uh, to create an electric vehicle. And, you know, this is not something that they just started and then gave up on. This is something they've been working on for a decade now and decided to, to cut ties with it. You know, the, the internally they, they let employees know, but the focus is going to move more towards AI, go figure. So I personally think it's, you know, it, it's one thing. I mean, if they spent $5 billion on a project that they're just going to, you know, no longer work on, you know, that's definitely egg on the face. No question about that. And I agree with everything David wrote um, in there. You know, it, it, Apple can get away with it based on it being Apple and it created the smartphone as we know it. And so it gets a pass. And then also $5 billion divided by market cap or cash in the bank is really just a, a tip amount. We'll see if their shift in, in efforts can, can pan out better. And hopefully they don't regret that. Um, the trade deficit for the month of January widened 2.6% to $90 billion, 90.2. So, you know, it's um, I, I wrote about this and asked Brian today, coincidentally, but there was a question about what I written previously about why a strong dollar is good for the U.S. over time. And this has something to do with that. We've had this big run in the U.S. dollar. The dollar is up 17 percent versus trading peers to its historical average. And so it's, it, you know, it's 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 strong and it's based on fundamentals. And those things are good. We, we want a relatively strong economy versus the rest of the world. And we want to be more competitive and, and all these things. And, and so that those aren't bad things. I, I'll take those. As far as dollar strength goes, you know, it can create more, um, of, you know, trade deficits because our currency gets stronger. And so we're able to buy more goods cheaper overseas and we tend to import more and we already do import more than we export. And, and that is why one of the reasons why a strong dollar is actually not necessarily your enemy. It hurts exports short term, of course. You know the stuff that we sell overseas gets more expensive, and we sell less of it, and that's that's real, and it's not to be dismissed. But over time, 
you know, if, if we value being the world's reserve currency, having it be stable, having it be strong, having it be, be trusted, all those things, or, or why it is that. And so we'll take some of the short-term bad with the very long-term good, uh, was my point. Again, tomorrow we've got PCE that will come out. That'll be the main headline that I'll walk through with you. And we also have some jobless numbers out as well. Um, that I'll walk through, but uh, I'm going to let uh, this this end a little short today, uh, which is which is fine. Uh, for those of, that have interest, I'll be on CNBC World's uh, Street Signs tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific. And with that, I'm going to let you go for the evening. I wish you all well and talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.